This is the wild Atlantic coast of Portugal, a large stretch of coastline made up of beautiful and wide sandy beaches interspersed with towering crumbling sea cliffs shaped by the crashing waves of the Atlantic Ocean. If you're new around here, we're Jack and Joe, that's our scruffy hitchhiker Frank and this is Big Pig, our adventure home on wheels that's taken us all around Europe and the UK. Join us in this video as we seek out stunning cliffside park ups, wild coastline and incredible beaches and we also experience the true power of the Atlantic Ocean as we watch the gigantic waves in Nazare. So put your feet up, click subscribe and come along for these wild journeys in Portugal. Hello, hello. Welcome to another beautiful day in Portugal. The sun is shining. It's getting up to 18 degrees today. It's the beginning of February or mid-February. It's just bloody beautiful. Last time we filmed and in our last video we mentioned we were going to buy boards. That's Joe just getting the boards out. We've bought some learner boards. We've come back to Balial. It was a beautiful sunrise this morning, beautiful sunset. And basically we've been working Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and after every day of work, we've gone out and had a surf. My friend's turned in Tasha. We bought a van just over there. And yeah, we're gonna go surf. Ready to roll. So in Balliol, you've got two beaches basically. Balliol over onto the left side of Balliol Island. And then we said Legide, but I think it's actually Legida, which is on this side, which is a bit more like the learning waves. Although at the moment they're quite big. Um, but yeah, like the other night, for example, it wasn't like in the middle of the day. It was just us three just surfing with the sun going down. It was, it was honestly so good. So yeah, we definitely got the surfing bug. Oh. And we're now gonna go eat some waves and hopefully Joe will be able to catch it on the camera. <laughs> I really want him to fall over. <laughs> it appears Joe managed to film our friends Alice, Rob and Charlie standing up on a few waves but failed to capture me. I can assure you however, I can catch a wave and here's the photographic proof for it. After drying off and warming up, we waved goodbye to our friends and headed off to Lisbon for a few days where we were due to meet Joe's parents. We didn't feel much, so this is a time leap ahead to a windy day back at Balliol after a weekend of eating and drinking our way around Lisbon. It's a very big moment for Charlie and Tash at the moment because uh, they're actually going to leave Balliol for the first time in how long, mate? Ten and a half week, weeks? Three weeks. Three weeks. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, emotion. It's going to be emotional. Yeah, you're going to be all right doing <laughs> I'm that. I'm fearing up. Just Charlie Cable leaving his Kelly Slater. <laughs> <laughs> We've got our surfboards. Car, are you going to miss Balliol, Joe? Yeah, I love Balliol. It's so easy, like an easy life. Everyone's really nice, friendly, lovely little vibe. It does get quite sandy though, look how our whole van needs a clean. Oh yeah. Ugh, anyway, right, let's go. So as we drive down to try and find this, uh, cliff top spot for tonight. We've decided to take the scenic route as opposed to the motorways and it's actually been quite good for a number of reasons. Firstly we just get to see more Portugal and like the nice little tiny towns that we're weaving through. Two, it's been amazing for our MPG. I don't think we've had MPG like this ever before in the van. 
I think we were on like 26, which is pretty decent for Big P. And three, we've just filled up with some really cheap diesel. 153, no, one euro 53 per litre, which is just the cheapest we've had since Albania last year, I think. And that diesel in Albania was bad. <laughs> it was bad diesel. But yeah, lots of plus points. Doesn't really matter that it's drizzly and a bit rainy. It's been a very nice scenic drive to take us along the coast. 500 meters, right. So we've actually, there's only an hour drive down south from Balial, further towards Lisbon. I think we're just south of Erisera, but we stopped in a shop. Um, so it's taken us about four hours this afternoon because we've been mooching about. But we're hopefully going to get to this spot. And I'm hoping it's not going to be too busy, but it is like a Portuguese like half turn. So let's see. And it's down like this. Lovely bumpy dirt track, Joe. Our favourite kind of spot, eh? Yay! <laughs> uh, that's not too busy, to be fair. Oh, that's alright. Get it in. That's lovely. A good view. A bit windy, but a good view. Approve, Frank. Do you approve of the, of the nice view? Oh, Frank's feeling sorry for himself. He just had his little rabies jab. Booster. Frank, I have heard. I don't want to get you too excited, but there is a massive, massive beach just down there. It looks pretty epic, to be honest. Did you see the beach? Go and have a good look. Go and find it. Where's the beach? I think it's out this Where's way. The beach? <laughs> this is it's out this way. Look, you need to see. It's that time of the video where we find a lovely place to look at the sea. And have a brew of a view. Brewski with a view. Oh, <laughs> oh, could have a few brewski with a view skis if the guys turn up. Oh, oh just just a cup of tea. Yeah. Okay. Brew of view. That Balliol car park is good, but it's nice to have our home parked up despite the wind with a pretty beautiful view of the sea. And Joe has just opened up a bar of chocolate. Let's hope that we don't get, Joe, a knock with our chalk. Oh, God. That'd, That'd be the worst thing, wouldn't it, Frank? <laughs> That'd be terrible, Joe. That's awful, isn't it? Really? Waste so much. Yeah, do you reckon? Oh, bloody hell. God. Uh, look, I think this is the beach you can walk down to. You've got the beach down here. Look at this bad boy. Woo. Car. With the wind howling, we watch the sunset but from the warmth and shelter of Charlie and Tasha's van. Big drop, isn't it? Yeah. Wonderful sunset last night. And then the sunrise this morning was a bit cloudy. There was a bit of rain, but it seems to have burnt off all of that rain this morning with some lovely little sunshine. Um, I think we're gonna make the most of this sunshine and go on to another spot to go for a hike because looking at the weather forecast, the whole weekend for the next two days it's going to be a bit cloudy and rainy so this is the best walking weather if you just heard frank cry there he's heard talk of beach and balls so now he's really really excited so yeah we're going to go seek out um, a really cool beach actually it looks like it on the internet so yeah let's roll
we drove a short 40 minutes drive down into the Sintra Kashkaish National Park towards Praia de Roca, mainland Europe's westernmost point. Mainland Europe's most westerly point. That was more epic than it actually was, but there was some cool rock formations. I'm now going to walk down to Praia de Ursa, which um, I've seen pictures of, and it's like a beach with like even more cool rocks. And the sun's come out for hopefully at least the next hour, I say, as I stare at a rain cloud closing in, but we'll see. Wow! Whoa! Frank, look at that beach, bro. You're not getting down there, though. Oh, maybe you can. This is better view of the rock, isn't it? Yeah. Are these the same rocks from the westernmost point? No. A bit of a scramble going down. But it does look beautiful. We've seen it from up top. I'm in an hour about going down, but it's actually not as far as we thought it was going to be. It's just a bit of a scramble down the side of the cliff. It'll be worth it. This beach was voted one of the most beautiful beaches in the world by the Michelin travel guide, an authority. Um, and it's pretty remote and it's in the national park, so it hasn't been developed. It's beautiful. And the sun's still... Yeah, I can't... <laughs> Joe just said she can't wait to come back up this. Yeah. I mean, there is a rope a little bit further up, Joe. I'll attach you to my backpack and then we'll get Frank to drag us both up. We nearly fell. This walk is not for the faint hearted or for people that aren't wearing the appropriate shoe wear, which I might not be. <laughs> oh, Joe, he's gone. He's gone. Bloody beautiful. Worth the. I don't think the work, walk would actually take that long. How long were we walking for? Probably about 45 minutes. Yeah, but we stopped for like 15. I don't know. We'll see on the way back. Worth the scramble down. It's really top tier and the sun stayed out. Although clouds are gathering, but I'm in t shirt and shorts. It's not bad. Frank's had a chase with Bit Fetch, haven't you, Frank? We're just going to chill out here until we head back up. Clouds are circling, so I think we're going to head back up the cliff, back to the van, back to Big P, and then find somewhere to chill out for the rest of the day. While the Sincha Cascais National Park was beautiful and definitely a place you should visit when you come to Portugal, it proved to be a ridiculously hard area to park up in. In fact, the closer we drove south towards Lisbon, we were met with either rubbish spots or restrictions. What we thought would be a short drive turned into a mad two-hour slog through rush hour, through the capital of Lisbon, over its famous busy red bridge, with crazy drivers either side of Big P. It was hectic and stressful, it was not the end of the day we had planned. Literally driven from across there, see that hill there, that's Sintra. So we've driven all the way across the coast here, that's Lisbon there. We drove over the bridge, down along this coast, couldn't park there, couldn't park there, came up here. And now we're here. And hopefully it's gonna be okay.
It will be fine. Views are nice. Worth the drive down to here. Nice and quiet, like super quiet. My ears are ringing, it's so quiet. Mmm. This will do. Lots of rules we've broken then. <laughs> Don't drive during rush hour. We always say we should never drive during rush hour. And don't try and wild camp near cities. <laughs> what happened? We did both of those things and it didn't work out. But we're all good. Sometimes driving around in your camper van isn't as plain sailing as maybe we make it look. <laughs> well, maybe we make it look, I don't know. But this is really nice. Really, really nice actually. I'm looking forward to exploring it tomorrow, tomorrow morning. But I think we're gonna cook dinner. I might have a beer and we're gonna go chill out. <laughs> Good morning. After that hectic drive, we had quite a lot of rainy weather last night. It was actually quite relaxing on top of the van. But we've woken up to beautiful blue skies. So maybe the crazy drive was meant to happen and we were meant to come here because it's actually really, really nice. Like with the sun up, you can see around. Hardly, well, there's no houses in sight. Lots of cork trees, cliff walks, and like super quiet. Apart from, unfortunately, <laughs> look at these weirdos. Why did you park so close <laughs> to us? For God's sake, look how, we had a right, hell of mate. a view before you turned up. <laughs> have you seen how much space you could have parked in and you decided <laughs> to look at the, look at the gap between there? Explain to your community <laughs> that we turned up in the pitch black last night. Mm. And we just dove in here. <laughs> Basically. That's all right, it's level. Yeah, it's level, yeah, great. It's very close to us. We've got the view. Yeah, really, really nice. Super quiet. Look at this. I think you got all of the rain out of the system. And I think because yesterday afternoon was a bit hectic, I think we're just going to chill out here. and enjoy the views and this quiet part of Portugal. One day of chilling in this spot turned into two as the weather improved and we took full advantage of this beautiful park up with only a few other vans of passing locals for company. The spot had plenty of cliffside views, spectacular views of Lisbon into the distance, and the cherry on top was a small beach located just a short walk and scramble down from where we parked our vans. This little cove was a perfect winter sun trap. We sat, we drank cider, and we let the dogs exhaust themselves on a beach they had all to themselves. Frank dug this hole, look how happy he is, and Charlie and I learned a hard lesson about the power of the Atlantic Ocean. Funny to rain check that swim. It is rough. It doesn't look this rough from up, from up above. We're gonna chance it. We're gonna chance to swim. We're going in guys. Frank, are you coming in? Come on, let's go. Oh. Fucking hell. Get steam. Woo. It's a strong, it's a strong current. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh. Yeah, mate, look at literally as we go in that massive set's coming in <laughs> oh, oh. oh my god why is this look at this why is this going now <laughs> i'm getting pulled towards it <laughs> learned a hard lesson today. If it looks a bit too rough, don't go in. It was a bit too rough. 
Got some hilarious like footage of us walking into the beach here. God, nightmare. But we'll just look at it. It's still really nice and sunny, nice and warm. <laughs> Don't try that at home. After all the excitement of that incident, we planned to end our video here, but the mighty Atlantic Ocean had one last surprise up its sleeve. Good morning. It's about half seven this morning. We were all ready to get settled at that spot that we parked up in and spent the weekend at. And then we had an email come through with the Nazare big wave alert. So we hightailed it back up north. It was about a two hour drive last night. And we're back into Nazare, and I think the waves are going to get up to about to 40 to 60 feet, um, which is apparently the size of like four or five story buildings. That's massive. We always said that this was like a bucket list item for when we were in Portugal to go watch it after like towing competition. There's only one problem we're both working, so we're just going to maximise our morning, lunch, and evening break. There should be enough surf, we're hoping, and enough opportunities to see it over the next two days. Um, to just for it to be awesome but yeah really really excited how excited are you jack <laughs> we did say no matter where we were in portugal we we're going to hightail it back up so it's classically the furthest away we got from nazareth on this whole trip but it's going to be worth it we perhaps jumped the gun with our early morning pre-work walk but by the time we were back out at lunchtime, the wind was howling and the waves were getting big. Wow. Nazare's waves are gigantic due to a deep sea canyon just off the coast of Nazare's fort. This canyon effectively channels the ocean swell and can turn them into gigantic waves by the time it reaches the coast. Nazare juts out into the ocean and it means it is home to the biggest waves in the world. The biggest wave ever surfed here was measured at 26 meters, and the waves we're expecting here today were about half the size, but to us, they were still massive. This was a bucket list moment for us and a memory of Portugal will be one of our biggest highlights. By the time we finished work in the evening, the surfers had done for the day, but we did witness a beautiful sunset on the beach by the fort, which capped off a pretty exceptional week along Portugal's coast. Thanks for watching everyone, we'll catch you on our next adventure.